What's up everybody, Thralls Metal here once again. I'm the Krog Nick and I have an album review for you and this is one I have been eagerly anticipating for a while. So today we are going to go over the latest offering from Shooter, Helvir. I think that is how you said that. I actually looked up the pronunciation on the album title and in hindsight I probably should have looked up the uh, pronunciation on a fair amount of these tracks, but I didn't. Figured I'd at least get the album title kind of right. Anyway, this comes out on the 23rd of June on Season Miss Records. This band formed in 1993 in Oslo, Norway. This is their sixth album overall and their first one in about eight years since Antilive, which is where I got that killer suitor flag that a lot of people have noticed in the background. Actually, someone brought it up not too long ago and kind of wondered why I didn't bring them up very much. And I was like, shit, I haven't even thought about them in a while. And again, it's been eight years since their last album. I got into them with Desert Northern Hell, which is an absolute beast of an album. And for those that don't know, this is just straight up blasphemous, ugly black metal and I have pretty much dug every album they've put out so far. So naturally when I saw this was coming out, uh, first I was like, oh my god, they're still around? I kind of thought they just fucking, you know, broke up. It'd been so long since their last album. But both Nag and Drogluin, I think that's how you say their uh, stage names, they've returned with just an absolute vicious album. For those that aren't familiar with Shooter, they are just a very vicious black metal act. Lots of blast beats, lots of just cold, icy tremolo riffs, but an added dose of aggression to almost everything they do. A lot of their stuff is as explosive as it is blasphemous. I've always compared these guys a lot to Marduk. In fact, that's what I'm playing in the background because that seemed fitting. It's that heightened aggression that I love about this band so much. Everything feels like a flat out attack. The opening two tracks, Iron Beast and Presta Hammerin, Sure, that might be how it's said. Both of these songs are just flat out aggressive as hell. Blast beats, tremolo riffs, or icy cold. The vocals are horrific. I love the vocal delivery of Nag. He has that great shrill black metal delivery, but there's this extra kind of like push behind his vocals that make it sound more aggressive. And he's backed up really well by Drug Lewin doing low death metal roars every now and then. But both of these songs are aggressive in different ways. The first one is just kind of straightforward like old school black metal like very second wave norwegian black metal blast beats tremolo it sounds evil without anything extra on top of it like no extra synths or any sort of intro or anything like that it is immediately evil and that is another thing that i like about this band is they don't bother with a tremendous amount of extras like occasionally you have some synths and maybe a slower buildup, but the buildups are generally musical. It's not like a sample or a big symphonic part. The music itself comes off as evil right away. And if you already sound evil right out of the gate with just your music, you don't need a lot of extra shit to convince me you're evil. I already fucking believe you. But Presta Hammerin, and sure, that song is notably a little bit more thrashy. And the thrashy side occasionally comes out in the form of like more machine gun riffs, like more just heavy picking rather than doing like the tremolo melodies and such and really good harmonies in here. This one just kind of goes to the throat with like more thrashy rhythms, more like stomps. There's an awesome Celtic Frost style breakdown on it, albeit with like a little bit more uh, drum finesse to it, and that is with good reason. They have one John the Charn Rice on drums, famously from, you know, Job for a Cowboy, but also a really solid session drummer who's worked with a lot of fucking notable bands. When I saw that he was the drummer on here, I was like, man, he's gonna have his work cut out for him because this is gonna be a very blasty affair, and it really is. But man, he adds a lot of cool nuance to a lot of his playing, especially in the longer songs, which explore a little bit more dynamics. Because generally the shorter ones are very straightforward. In your face, you know, they just explode right out of the fucking gate and just immediately set fire to every church in town with just the riffs. They're also apparently some of the ones that are the most hard to pronounce. Uh, Gamle Eric and Fan Skap. Ogdod might be close on those, probably not, but those are just notably more just violent right out of the gate. Again, kind of mixing up that sort of evil, cold atmosphere that you expect from second wave black metal, but adding just 
a dose of aggression to it that just makes it even more hostile sounding. For the most part, the whole like sort of mode with black metal is to sound sinister and evil. And these guys do that really well, but again, that added aggression, that almost black metal level of brutality kind of sets them apart a little bit. But when they decide to dial up their more evil, sinister, moody side, they do it in grand fashion with songs like Surtur, Gods of Black Blood, and the title track in here. These are notably a bit longer and a little bit more lavish. Surtur is a little bit more of a slow build. It comes in with a creepy, kind of haunting, chilling, clean melody and builds upon that. You get like a nice kind of groovy drum break before it breaks into the cold tremolo harmonies that pretty much carry it and man it like has a lot of second wave love on there like D Mysterious or a blaze in the northern sky energy on that one but what I really like about that song is how they take that opening melody and work it into the bridge later and just kind of make it uh, a little bit more sinister and dark and more aggressive and again like aggressive is something that Shooter does incredibly well. Gods of Black Blood opens up with all the horror and wonder of an ancient sleeping deity awakening to just pretty much smite all of humanity. I totally get it. We had it coming. It's very grand. It's very epic sounding. There's a really good dissonant hook to it and this is where some of the riffs really come in and that is yet another thing that I like about this band. I like my black metal a little bit more on the riffy side and these guys like to bring in riffs. Yes, there are tons of cold, icy tremolos and blasts on here. I mean, those are hallmarks of the style, but I like hearing some solid riffs brought in and these guys just interwork them in between all the blasts and tremolos. And that helps this album in terms of like making the song stand out more, the songwriting dynamics. Hell, this song even employs like a little bit of groove and a breakdown at the end that is absolutely fucking epic. And it never loses steam, it never loses the evil energy that it is trying to conjure. And that energy is only doubled by the title track, which I think is possibly my favorite one on here. Notably the slowest track, a lot more doomy and there are some cool doomy moments kind of pockmarked on here generally kind of like just slower riffing with a more like sinister melodic lead i think all the melodies on here were probably co-written by satan himself because there isn't one on here that doesn't sound like it is the most evil fucking thing and the title track just fucking oozes this the main riff is absolutely catchy as hell and there's a little bit of like epicness to it the fact that it slows down a little bit and gives not only John Rice a chance to breathe behind the kit, it also kind of opens up the music. It isn't just a cluster of, you know, fast played riffs because the main gear of this album is fast as hell. So hearing them kind of open the playbook and kind of slow down and really let the mood set in is really awesome on here. I love the clever transitions. There's even one with a fucking cowbell on it and it fucking works. A lot of the time when I hear a cowbell pop up, the first thing I think is like, all right, it's kind of like an ironic thing. Like, eh, more cowbell. We all fucking know that joke. And uh, it's still a pretty good one. But here it's used as a just cool transition to the next awesome fucking riff. And I swear, like, all of the best fucking riffs are on this song, just in terms of, like, ones that are a little bit outside of the black metal spectrum. Like, there's a little bit more heavy metal flair to it, a little bit of thrash metal, and, man, this song is just triumphantly evil as fuck. The only thing that kind of took me out of it a little bit was the end, which is really cool because it's just, like, a campfire, and you hear, like, this doom gong or what the fuck ever in the background. It's... Really cool, like it kind of sets this, you know, awesome fucking mood for a bit and then it kind of goes on maybe a little too long. And the entire time I was thinking, man, if they could have like worked this in, like have it like fade up from the background and the music fade down and then kind of close on that. I don't know, I, I think it would have capped off the song just a little bit better, but I mean, overall it was still very effective. My only real issues with this album came towards the end of it. Honestly, the Title track should have closed the show. It is grand, it is epic, like that is how you fucking close it down right there. And then you have two other tracks at the end and they're both good, but they feel like they shouldn't be at the end. Fans Scap Og Dodd, probably fuck that one up again. That one is another like fast, kind of just blasty evil song. It's explosive, like great melodies in it, great tremolo harmonies, like it checks off all the boxes of everything they do really well. It's just, it kind of follows something that was so vastly different on the album. And this kind of feels like, well, this is almost like a bonus track. Or just a song that would kind of fit in more at the middle of the album. 
unfortunately it just doesn't stand out that much just because I feel like we've already heard like that side of them done really well earlier on in the album. And then you have the last track, Hivit Dad, which is a really kind of spacey, evil closing instrumental. It's really cool how it builds up. Like you have this sort of like spacey guitar kind of fading in in the background and there's really clever drum accents and it builds into this kind of slow groove. And again, slow is not a speed on here very often, but it builds up to some cool melodies and just as you're kind of getting into it, it kind of just starts fading back out and kind of deconstructing itself. And it kind of feels like it would have been like a cool bridge on a longer song on here. Like it feels like an extra idea that wasn't totally, you know, fleshed out, but they had a good melody and they wanted to throw it on there. And it's the shortest track in the album. I mean, even the track before it, the one that I couldn't say earlier and probably still can't say now, that one's only a little bit over three minutes. So these, Two little extra bits at the end, while I think they're really good, it kind of messes with the pacing of the album because, I mean, it opens up with such gusto and fucking violence and you kind of expect like a really good closer, like a big, grand, epic, evil bastard of a song and they do give it to you, but it's not the closer. But that is legit my only real complaint on here. When it came down the songs, I think they did an excellent job. The production's fucking raw and nasty, but it's well mixed. Yeah, they checked off every box that I would look for in a shooter album or just in like, you know, aggressive black metal in general. So overall, I'm gonna give this four stars. This is a fucking banger. Welcome back, shooter. I have missed you. I've had this band's flag hanging down in my basement for so goddamn long and, you know, it's just awesome to finally be able to review them. And with this album, it's just such a vicious album, but it also shows off what else they're good at. Building really dynamic songs, sinister, evil melodies. This is, you know, a very hooky album too. Like there are a lot of catchy riffs in here. And this band does riffy black metal so damn well. All of the aggression that they are known for is here, but also again, the nuance, the melody, the atmosphere. But again, most of the atmosphere is done by just the band itself. Like you have some extra synths here and there and maybe some samples, but most of it, they convince you of how evil they are with just their music alone. If you're a fan of Marduk, Mayhem, uh, early Darth Throne, I'm pretty sure you're gonna dig this. This is just black metal done fucking well and I can't wait to get my copy. So if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up and if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there's a link down below with rawsmetal.com. Our Patreon link is there as well as our store. We will be loading up on shirts at some point and we will definitely let you know and show off the designs when you get them. But for now, we just gotta essentially play the waiting game still. We'll definitely keep you posted on all that stuff. And of course, we have a giveaway going on for when we eventually hit 15K, which I believe we have less than 70 subscribers to get to, get to that mark. So if you have not entered in on this giveaway, all you have to do is comment on the video linked down below it is also playing automatically on our channel once you comment you are entered and once we hit the 15k mark i will do a little announcement video and one of you lucky metalheads will get a stack of 11 cds and we will have reached uh yet another milestone on the channel that again i did not think we would actually hit and that is all due to you guys thank you all so much it means the world to us being able to do this stuff. I'm probably going to be doing uh, solo videos for reviews this week. The other guys were busy with other projects and I told them I would just take this one on for this week. So get ready to see even more of my face, even though you kind of see a lot of my face on this channel anyway. But again, thank you guys so much and we will catch you later.